<laughs> Being in the business of selling, I not only sell hairdressing services during the week, but I also <coughs> sell products that support that business. So I'm a marketing merchandiser person. But my purpose this morning is to clarify a few of the ideas and perceptions of the world, of the word heart and its relation to the world and our, and our own spiritual heart. There's a song called, You Gotta Have Heart. Now I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> if somebody could, you can step right up. And the words go like this. You gotta have heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grin should start. For the sake of today's lesson, I have rephrased it just a little bit. You know how I like to do that. <laughs> it's important to put things in one's own words. So this is how I rephrased it. You gotta have heart. It's a pretty good way to start. But in the action of becoming more real, to live your ideals, you are more than just the human heart. How's that? Because I believe there are two aspects of heart. Just as there are two aspects of spirit. Spirits, love, and law. There is a spiritual heart and a human heart. The human heart is physical, and it keeps us ticking, doesn't it? Doesn't it, doctor? If it stops ticking, <laughs> like the old Timex, you know? It's the primary pump for the body's blood flow. For our circulation, so our cells are well nourished. Well, can there be physical pain of the heart and the heart muscle? Yeah, there can be. There can be. Some people do have heart issues. Well, the spiritual heart is the God muscle of our being, nourished by love and powered by peace. Because Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us in the Science of Mind textbook, peace is the power at the heart of God. It is through the revelation of the self, our spiritual self, to the self, our human self, that one understands life. That he approaches the power which is at the heart of God. So this is what I know about that. The spiritual heart is a divine principle that forever works through us as the thing itself, as God, as infinite knower. The spiritual heart outpictures life from a deeply personal sense of the unity of all of life. The spiritual heart responds to our emotions and our feelings, but is not diminished in its perfection. Read that again. The spiritual heart responds to our emotions and our feelings, but is not diminished in its perfection, because you see, spirit is never diminished in and of its own way of operating. We are the ones who put the lid on it. We're the ones to take the spiritual tranquilizer and slow things down. The spiritual heart is the part of us that is our creative source, if you will. The human heart responds to our emotions and feelings as well, but it is influenced. Our human heart is influenced by our emotions and our feelings and every aspect of life that's out in the world if we let that in. I have a question. Have any of you ever experienced heartache in your life? Let me ask it quite differently. Who hasn't? <laughs> there you go. Most of us have experienced that idea of heartache. What I believe about the aching heart, which is my title today, that it is a most profound experience, if we let it be, in both the human and the spiritual aspects. The aching heart reminds us of how deeply we love and that we have loved. Aching is anticipating something 
or someone looking forward to something so deeply that, oh, I can, I, I'm, I'm just aching for that. So that's an expectation of what's to come. It is tender, it is aching, and it is rich. The aching heart is when we're wide open, one that many times screams right through us. Screams right through us. We get to feel, and it's so real. It is so real. That's when we are so real and authentic, is when our hearts are wide open. You and I have had opportunities recently to feel real. And my spiritual heart has been wide open. My human heart has ached, but my spiritual heart has been allowed to be free and open and to actually move into a greater uh, understanding of life. <clears throat> Through the transition of four of our beloveds recently, there have been and continue to be great emotion. Isn't there? There's great emotion. What a gift to be alive and to feel so deeply. It is a gift to feel. We get so um, influenced and uh, most times bombarded by outside things we should be doing. I have an eye issue. Temporary. But it's a reminder. Our bodies are reminders of what we're doing and what we are doing maybe a little too much of and where we should turn around and look within. So anything with, with I know about looking out, if it's an eye situation, needs to be looked in. So I've been looking out too much in the world of things I think I have to do, rather than looking within and knowing that it is done on time without my pushing. Because that's been my pattern. Pushing, pushing for myself. Hopefully no one else I pushed, but that's for me. But I realize that I'm so blessed to know that I can come back to me and see where I need to understand. There is a song that you were handed the words to And if you pull that out now. It's on blessing. I am so blessed. And you don't have to sing it, but I would like you to speak it. And we're going to do this together. Let's start right now. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. So I'd like you to take this with you this week. And keep it somewhere where you can see it and read it and know it. And uh, remind yourself how truly blessed we are to to be in this life and to feel and to move and to take our genuine selves out in the world. And um, I have a prescription for you this morning too. <laughs> Don't tell the doctor. <laughs> it's um, a prescription for an aching heart. When you, when you sense that. Um, and it's by... Um, Dr. Maxine Kay and her book, Alive and Ageless. And as I was reading through this, I thought, well, this, is, this would be the perfect uh, ideas to hand out for you today. And there's, there's five of them. The first one is, realize that beauty as a universal attribute is present everywhere. And the second, begin to notice beauty and elegance in your world. 
in nature, in art, in music, in people. Make a list of what is graceful and beautiful about yourself. How about that one? Make a list of what is graceful and beautiful about yourself, both inside and out. Acknowledging and appreciating your uniqueness. Who has done mirror work where you look and go, Hi, good looking. <laughs> You're looking good today. <laughs> well, I love you. <laughs> Some people, I think, have yeah, because they're laughing. <laughs> it's not easy at first. It's not easy. But when you can look you, your physical presence, right in the face, it is powerful. I officiated a memorial a few weeks ago for a dear friend's mother. And the memory table was set up, showed her grandparents, her parents, the woman herself, who was 93, and then her life in pictures and items and little memorabilia. And at the end, people were encouraged to look into the mirror for the purpose of noticing the face of all the people that she loved. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? Yep. So you have to look at your own face and to know, this is what she saw, and she loved me. And I'm here because I loved her, so I must be loved. <laughs> Number four. Daily, daily, release at least one resentment and replace it with something you appreciate. Oh, I don't have that many resentments. <laughs> I might have one. <laughs> I'm not saying look for them. But when you... When you request of your spiritual nature that you would like to appreciate life more, the things you don't will become evident by people that come to you, by things you think to the TV, or your dog, or the neighbor, or the bush, whatever it is. Just notice. Just notice. And replace it with something you appreciate. Number five. My personal favorite. Smile more. Starting with your very own image in the mirror. Smile more. Want to try that? Turn and smile to somebody. Turn and smile to somebody. Hi, somebody. I thought that feel pretty good, huh? <laughs> it's the little things that we, that we do out of ourselves that, that make... Did you feel the energy change? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's how... It's contagious. That's how it works. So, as my lesson nears completion, but it's not finished yet, I offer this verse... It's one of the verses of you got to have heart. When your luck is battling zero, get your chin up off the floor. Mister, you can be a hero. You can open any door. There's nothing to it but to do it. There's nothing to it but to do it. So, beloved, bless your inner spiritual beingness and allow it to show itself where? Through you. That's the only way it can show up, is through you. It can't show up as your spouse, your partner. Your dog will reflect back a little bit. But that's about it. But it has to show up through you. Through you. And go into the calm. Close your eyes for a moment. Go into the calm and luminous silence to renew. 
when you're feeling a little bit aggravated. But stay in the soil of your life for your strength. Stay in the soil of your life for your strength. Remember, we are the ones, now is the moment for love. So it is. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste.